Dear students, in today's video, we will learn about the professional method of solving a problem. That is, how do we, how do professionals think before solving a particular problem and developing the software. When you were beginners, uh, you were learning any programming language like C, C++ or Python. What you would do? You would simply, you were given an assignment, you would simply sit on computer and start writing program for that. In case of small programs, it is okay. But when you have to write larger programs, which are in thousands of lines of code, called KLOC, K means kilo, L lines of code, KLOC. So, uh, many thousands of lines of code software is not written in that manner. Before starting to write code for that, you have to think on a particular line. You have to analyze the, uh, these, uh, the problem. So, uh, the, that particular line of thinking, we will be discussing it tomorrow. So, method of developing the software is known as system development life cycle SDLC. You will be studying it in some other class in detail. But here we will be studying basic, most basic steps involved in the development of a program. So these are a few steps listed here. They are not all. Mean, I mean when a professional, uh, when a system is developed on a professional level, there are more, many more steps which will be involved, but we here we will be taking up only basic ones. So first of all is the problem analysis. As the name indicates that uh, before writing code for a particular problem, you will have to uh, work on the details of the problem. So you will first understand what exactly the problem is, what are, uh, what can be the solution, what should be the output and what should be the input etc etc. Later on we will take an example to analyze a problem. So after the problem is understood in detail, then you, start, uh, you have to move on to the second step called solution design. In this step, you will be designing solution for the that problem. Uh, means uh, the solution uh, solution design will involve functions, etc., uh, its loops, etc., whatever will be used. So after once you have designed the solution, you will move on to the third step called coding. So this step involves practical software writing, uh, practical code writing means you will be writing the code in a particular language for example python or any whatever language you opt to uh, solve and after coding after developing software for the program before launching it to the customer or to the market you will have to test it and while testing you will be providing various combinations of inputs, critical inputs rather, uh, to check whether the program runs accurately in all those situations. And if there are any discrepancies, they will be removed in the debugging stage. And once you have ascertained that your software has no bugs, it is ready to be shipped then it, it will be employed to the customer. And after implementation of the software, maintenance is also required. Means uh, time to time there are changes, uh, changes are required in the system. Those changes will be implemented during maintenance segment. So let's take them one by one. First of all, problem analysis. Problem analysis can be understood with the with an example. I have taken this example very much from your book. So here, if you study it carefully, this is a problem regarding a an agency which provides cars on rent, and they have four kinds of cars: economy class, compact, mid size, full size. 
so four categories of cars are available with them and they provide it for rent and rate of the rent per day is given it's different for all the cars for example for economy car you you will have to pay 1000 rupees a day and similarly compact car costs 1500 rupees per day and the mid sized car 2000 rupees per day and the full sized car 2500 rupees per day so this in this step means uh, while we are analyzing the problem we read it very carefully we listen to the customer what are their requirements so <coughs> further going on uh, they also provide the agency also provides discount of 10% but only if the car is rented for more than 7 days another policy is there that no one can rent the car for more than 30 days so these are the situations this is the analysis of the problem and further it says the user is requested to select a car type and number of days for which he wants to take the car on rent calculate the final amount to be paid for the agency means we are to develop a system develop a software which will compute rent total rent for a particular user so in the ana problem analysis phase what we will be analyzing we have understood the problem very carefully now let's uh, let's make further analysis how many data type how many data items you need for example in this case you need variables first variable should be rate rent rate rent rate will be depending on the type of car class of car used class of car rented so first data item should be rent rate rent, uh, rent rate secondly another data type should be the car uh, size car type of car so type of car actually you can you have four types of cars you can classify them as e capital e e for economy c for compact m for mid size f for full size so if you use first characters of this category and store them as the category of car so car category will be a variable which should be capable to store a letter out of e c m and f so we have come to a conclusion that another data type is car type which should be which should be of type character so the first one first variable was rate rate of rent which should be integer integer number because we have to deal with 1500 2000 and 2500 etc another data type you need to know is rate of discount this was rate of rent and now you need to know about rate of discount because we have two slabs of a uh, discount 10% for the users who rent out uh, who rent out the car for more than 7 days and 0% discount for for the customers which lend the car which take the car for less than 7 days less than or equal to 7 days so there are two categories of discount also so rate of discount can be an integer it may be either 10% or 0% so we have to store 10 or 0 so these are the main data items and further data items you can be you can be using r amount to be paid or discount total discount etc so after analyzing this problem you can decide how many variables and what should be their data types you will be using in your software so such kind of analysis leads to a better solution so before writing code for the program you work on the problem first so now as we know how many variables should be there after that we can also decide what should be the input 
note it that we should provide minimum number of inputs in the program so that least number of things be used uh, be asked from the customer so minimum number of variables you need to be input are first of all type of car user wants to get and secondly how many days he will be using the car for right if we know these two values the many things can be calculated by our system itself so we will provide a system which asks minimum questions to the user so that would be least annoying software so uh, this phase of problem analysis i think you have uh, understood it now let's move on to the second step which deals with the solution design so once we have understood the problem very carefully we can design design the solution to our pro problem this solution can be in so many shapes for example here we are taking algorithm you can have flow chart you can have so many tools uh, which will be used to show the design of solution so here it's an example that uh, if you really carefully uh, first of all the uh, start of the program then it prompts user to enter the car type whether car is e type economy type small car medium size car etc so uh, it again prompts the user for number of days for which car is used uh, is required so once these two inputs are provided by the user it will start its working if number of for example you see if number of days is greater than 30 then this count uh, days is greater than 30 it should uh, create a message it should give a message that it cannot be rented car cannot be rented out for more than 30 days if number of days required is not greater than 30 then we will check for whether the number of days is greater than 7 if number of days are greater than 7 and discount percentage is 10% else means if number of days are less than 7 then no discount is provided so discount percentage or discount rate is zero until here we have decided what should be the rate of discount and we have received input from the user means type of car and number of days so now we start a an if condition if car is type e then rate of rent is this if car is type of c then rate of rent is this else and so on so we have categorized the rate of rent for all types of car e c m or f so once we know the rate of rent and rate of discount we can use some formula and calculate total rent before discount and calculate discount and then the discounted amount so this is the design we will be using uh, to write a code now when we have finalized our design next step is to translate this design into a particular language if you are learning python then we will talk of python so this is the coding so this is the code in which your program is coded you need not uh, bother about this code what are the uh, what are the various uh, keywords being used here because you have just started learning python then once you know the coding in python it will be it will appear very simple to you all but here you should know what coding is coding is the actual uh, program written in actual language which will be executed and run right after writing coding we move on to the testing phase testing can be done by providing various inputs for example first Uh, we have taken different columns car type a first value which we provided to check for the
correctness of our program is car type A and number of days 8. So A type car number of days it should be just a minute expected result should be error number of days. provide various inputs. We have two, two inputs in our program, car type and number of days. So, A is perhaps the type which is not available. So, not available type of car is required for eight days and your program should not take it. It should provide some error message. Some kind of error, uh, message will be given that such car is not available with us. And uh, when we run the program, actual output is also n uh, name error. That is expected result was error, means program will not run with this combination of inputs. And your program provides the error, same error. So it's testing uh, this phase of this combination of testing it has provided the expected output so therefore it has passed this step in the next step we provide E as the car type and A is the number of days now E type car E is the valid type of car so number of days is 8 so for this the calculation if you manually do the if you manually do calculation for that, the expected result should be 7200. After that, you run the program and you get output 7200, which matches with the expected value. So it is also leveled as pass. Thirdly, you provide car type E and provide it for zero input days. Uh, zero number of days. So zero number of days output should be zero and you, if your system provides zero output this system is uh, this step is also passed. And similarly next combination of input you have E as the car type and number of day is days is negative which is not possible. So if you provide this combination your program should not work. So expected result is should not work. But your program runs for it. It calculates the output which is minus 2000 which, which means nothing. So the expected result should be there should be some message that the number of days is not valid but it provides output. So this is not the behavior by your program which is expected. So it should be corrected. So there is some problem in the program. You will have, you will have to rectify it. Means you will have to apply check on the number of days that it should be positive only. Right? We can improve this by if I move on to the design. We can make changes here. If number of days are greater than here, if number of days are greater than 30, we can provide another condition here that number of days should be greater than 0. So we can deal with it. So make changes to this program and then check for other inputs. So all possible critical inputs are provided to it and expected value and actual result are compared and after this comparison, if, if, if there is a match in all cases, then it will be evaluated as passed, passed. So after complete testing and debugging, then you deploy the software to the market or uh, for the customer, particular customer. So after deployment, it requires maintenance. So maintenance involves post-implementation issues or some kind of change in policies. For example, the agency changes rate of discount or policy uh, or company introduces new policies. 
So according to that, you have to make changes into the software and provide the maintenance to the customer. So this was the uh, the sequence of steps which will be followed be, uh, while developing a software. Uh, in the design phase, if you remember that we have discussed algorithm only, we can have so many tools which are helpful in uh, developing the software. So out of these tools, we will be discussing algorithm, flowchart, decision table, decision tree and pseudo code one by one. So let's take algorithm first. It looks like this. Algorithm, you have learned from childhood that it is a uh, it is a sequence to uh, it is a sequential uh, sequence of steps followed to solve a particular pro problem. So it will be in the form of steps and they have numbers. This number is important because you have to implement these steps in proper sequence. You cannot change their sequence. If you do so, you won't be getting results, appropriate results. So you write step-by-step -step method of solving a program like this. For example, here we are discussing a particular problem uh, in which three variables are compared and the greatest number is found out of them. So algorithm looks like this. Further next you have flowchart. Flowchart is also a tool used to show the design. These, uh, this flowchart has, uh, you know, as you know, this contains so many shapes and arrows. All these uh, shapes mean some particular uh, activity. For example, this is the symbol of start and end, start and stop. This is the symbol for input and output, and this uh, this uh, uh, parallelogram was used to input and output, and this rectangle is usually used for processing purposes, and this rhombus is used for decision making. Yes, uh, you are to go different ways. If you uh, you evaluate this condition, if it is yes, then go this way, and if no, go this way. Similarly, you can have symbols like this for bifurcation of path, and similarly you have this, and so many symbols, more, uh, more symbols are used. I think you are well aware of that. So you can design a solution in the form of a flowchart also. And these designs can be implemented, can be translated into a particular language very easily. For example, start. If you are doing solving problem in C, then what formalities you have to do to start a program? You have to write, to write like void, main, etc. And stop is done by closing the braces of the main function. Then you have read means how do you input if you are in C or C++ you can use scanner or C in etc. If you are using Python then you can use input function and similarly all the steps can be translated once you have designed it. <coughs> Next uh, most important thing in the design is decision. You have to implement so many decisions in the uh, solution of a problem. So these decisions can be indicated in the form of decision table. Decision table basically divides into four, uh, if you divide it this and this way. So you will have condition stuff, action stuff, condition entry and action entry here. So this, these are the components of a decision table. Condition stuff contains conditions. For example, uh, in our case, in, in our example, we provided discount to the customers who take the car for more than seven days. We provide no discount to the people who rent out car for less than seven days, etc. So this stuff will be containing conditions. And action stuff will be action taken according to those conditions means if the days, number of days is greater than 7 
then what should be the action? The action is providing discount and the pro appropriate discount rate. And these rules will be entered here. We can have a broader look by taking a, an example. For example, this is the uh, decision table in which this, these are the condition stuff, this is action stuff, and this is condition entry, and this is action entry. So basically a table, decision table is divided into four parts. Let's work on, uh, let's take up, take up first part. First part has first condition named C1. C1 condition is order is greater than or equal to 5000 rupees. If the order is greater than 5000 rupees. The second condition is credit satisfactory. So we are implementing two conditions. Number one, order greater than 5000. Number two, credit satisfactory. So look at the first entry, first column of entry in condition stuff as well as in action stuff. So action taken is allowed discount of 10%, discount of 5% and third action is referred to manager means manager will decide in this case. So now take on the entries. So this condition first entry is if order is greater than 5000 yes. If credit is satisfactory yes means there is a customer which has a shopping of more than 5000 rupees and its previous his previous balance is also named means it, it has cleared all the dues so in this case we provide 10% of discount so cross in this column means this will be this action will be taken so discount will be 10% another entry entry number 2 so here order is not greater than 5000. So the customer has made a shopping worth less than rupees 5000. But its credits are clear. So in this case, you have to take this action. So this action means 5% discount is provided to him. Similarly, third entry, customer has purchased things worth more than 5000. So why here? And the second condition means his credit is not okay. No, means it's, it has not cleared his credit yet. So customer has brought, has made the shopping worth more than 5000 but its previous dues are not clear. So in this case take this action. This action means the case will be referred to the manager who will decide which kind of discount it has to be given. Similarly, fourth one, fourth case, the customer has neither, purcha neither purchased more than 5000 nor its previous dues are clear. So in this case, case is referred to the manager. So this is the way how decisions are depicted in the development of software. So this is not complete solution to your problem. It is just a decision. Uh, represent is a representation of decision only. Another method of representing decision is decision tree. Earlier we used tables for depicting decisions. Now we will be uh, we will be discussing this in the form of a tree. So root can hit then condition, then subcondition, and in that case, take action. Let's take an example. So basic customer policy is this. If the order is greater than 5000, then second condition is credit is satisfactory. So allow 10% discount. So we will reach at this position after crossing these two steps. Number one, the credit should be satisfactory. Number two, the purchase should be made more than 5000 rupees. If this is okay, customer has purchased more than 5000, 
but its credit is not clear then refer to manager the same example as we discussed in the form of decision table is being discussed in the form of decision tree similarly if order is not greater than 5000 it is less than 5000 worth 5000 worth if credit is satisfactory then 5% discount will be provided to the customer and if both neither the purchase is more than 5000 nor the credit is satisfactory then refer to the manager so in this situation these are the conditions and these are actions so this is just method to depict the decision earlier we used table and now we are using tree Third, uh, another example to uh, another tool to depict the solution of our problem is sudo code sudo means false false code means at the at present we are not using the proper language we are not following the syntax of that language but uh, but we are just depicting it in the simple form sudo form for example we write for here without going into detail what should be the syntax of using for statement in any programming language we simply use it for k is equal to r to s this means that k should be the loop counter it should start from r then it should go up to s by t means in the steps of t you have to do this in uh, in these statements will be repeated this much number of times here we are not focused on the exact syntax of the programming language we just write sudo code similarly if we are implementing while loop we are doing it like this so but during coding this will be translated into exact syntax so these are few code uh, few tools to depict our solution thank you very much